If you've at all been paying attention to the news or the media recently, you've probably come across the term quantum computing. As quantum computing becomes more and more mainstream, people are, understandably, struggling to explain exactly what quantum computers are, how they work, and the fundamental concepts surrounding them. IBM Quantum is the world leader in quantum computing. We have the most sophisticated quantum program in the world, and lots of dedicated free educational content so that you don't have to feel left in the dark about what's going on in this space. Today, in this video, I'm going to answer some of the most common intermediate level questions about quantum computers. Let's get started. Number one, when will quantum computers replace laptops? Well, the most important thing to know is that quantum computers are not just faster, regular computers. So the answer is, they almost certainly never will. It is a misconception that it's quantum computers versus classical computers. It's really quantum computers aiding classical computers versus classical computers alone. Quantum computers are more efficient, in theory, at only a subset of computational problems. Most computational problems the public is familiar with can be computed with no issues whatsoever on a regular computer. In our world, we call them classical computers. Adding a quantum processor to your phone or your laptop would not add any benefit. Number two, if functioning quantum computers exist today, then why aren't they doing all of the things people said quantum computers can do? Well, quantum computing is a new computing paradigm that presents difficult technological challenges. And while there has been a lot of exciting progress, the technology is still in its infancy. When we discuss the development of quantum computing technology, there are a couple different eras people refer to. The one that is furthest off, but most powerful, would be the era of fault-tolerant quantum computing, which means we would have machines capable of detecting and fixing intrinsic errors, even in the middle of a calculation. We're not there yet. Currently, the quantum computers that exist are quite a bit smaller. And while we know how to mitigate some types of errors, we can't account for all of them. So at this time, we are still very much in an era of exploration, where we are exploring what applications could still make use of the processors of this size and functionality. We don't believe the answer is none, but it's still a very big parameter space that we have only begun to explore, while we are still very much working towards building machines that are capable of fault tolerance. Number three, can all computing problems take advantage of quantum computing? No. Most calculations that we all do on a day-to-day -day basis have no need for quantum computational power because they are simple. However, there is a whole realm of really hard computational problems that people working in science and medicine and optimization would love to be able to solve, but they can't. Quantum computers allow us to push that barrier a little bit more. And it's likely that as that technology matures, we will find even more problems that they can aid in. Four, what is a quantum gate? A quantum gate is a basic operation or instruction performed by a quantum computer on a small number of qubits, usually just one or two. For IBM quantum computers, quantum gates are performed by highly calibrated microwave pulses that give instructions to the qubits on how to behave. Five, do more qubits automatically make a faster quantum computer? No. Qubit count is just one metric that is important to keep in mind when we're looking at the maturation of the technology. Just as important are the quality of the qubits, which means how well they can store quantum information and how fast we can run instructions on them. Citing a processor with a high qubit count means little, unless these other metrics are also taken into account. Six, what does a qubit actually look like? Well. It's essentially just an electronic circuit, like a regular bit, but it has additional components that give it access to quantum behaviors, such as nonlinear inductors. In our third and final video in this series, we're gonna dive into even more advanced questions in the quantum computing space. So stay tuned. 
Until then, if you have further questions, drop them in the comments below, and we'll see you next time.